Hi folks, we're trying to get away from using high speed steel twist drills in the lathe and I was flipping through the Shars catalog and I saw this coolant through indexable mini drills. And what's really cool is they can drill from a solid, so drill blind holes, bore and then face and so forth. And I thought that's pretty awesome. What's even better is they take a CCMT insert or CC type, which means I can get aluminum inserts and steel. So we got the tool, problem was, and I didn't actually even realize it, it was a one inch shank here. And for the Tormach lathe, we could have bored out a holder, but really it's a pain in the butt. So everything is three quarter. So what the heck? So we turned it down to three quarter. This lathe did a great job, no problem doing so with a good finish and uh, the tolerance, yours truly goofed. I tried to hold it in a, a four jaw and I, uh, I A-bomb 79 it in, but I wasn't able to get it just perfectly square. I could get, you know, a thou run out here, but then not out here. And I didn't have something, because you've got this uh, fillet here, um, so I ended up just grabbing it with a 5C, which would have worked fine, except I didn't quite grab it hard enough, and one of the passes was a little aggressive, so it, it marred it up here. That won't actually um, do anything, so it, the tool's cutting great, and I got so excited because it's Friday afternoon, and this thing is going to be awesome to have in the lathe, again, because we've got a polished aluminum ins cutting insert here, and let's show off a piece of aluminum, but the same tool can do steel, and it's great because it gets rid of these, uh, these expensive twist drills that go dull, and you can use this to open up a hole before you get a, stick a big boring bar in there. So let's, let's rock and roll here. Um, there's no real clocking of it, so far as I can tell. I could be wrong. They did have a flat when it came from Shars. Um, that, that flat is now gone because I, um, I uh, obviously turned it down. I was thinking, I, I was testing the, the tolerance when I turned it. If I was going to have any trouble with it, I was going to um, I was going to turn it o slightly over and go over to the surface grinder and use the, uh, we've got one of those whirly jigs, um, which actually Tom Lipton just did an awesome video on making a homemade edge finder, but we didn't even have to. So check this out. I've got a saw cut piece of aluminum here. You're pr I'm going to guess that you're, maybe you shouldn't be coming from the back side like I'm about to do, but what the heck. Let's have fun. So we'll go a little bit slower here. No coolant just for sake of videoing. So you can see it's out of round uh, because of the saw cut. Not quite enough, I can tell. There we go. So there's a through hole coolant in the very end of the drill. So we can shove a lock line into that, which is awesome because then you're going to get coolant right at the tip of the drill. Another thing that we don't have with twist drills. Okay, just one more little bit to clean up on the face here. Trying to think though, the best way to uh, to do this type of facing with this tool probably again isn't meant to cut like this, but it's working great. I'm just thinking maybe you should just plunge in at Z zero um, instead of working it backward like this. Uh, okay, so we'll take a look at this face, folks. Beautiful cut. We do have a tiny center post. Uh, I guess if I kept coming back, I probably would have taken care of that. But great finish. Now plunge drilling or just drilling with this. This is what's awesome. So one sort of strange thing is that you don't drill at Z0 or X0 rather. So you don't drill on center. You drill at least 20 thou off center. So right now I'm 20 thou um, south or, or X negative of Z0 and we'll go 1200 RPMs and I'm going to go about 4% on the path pilot jog which turns out to be 2,000 per rev. Ready? Boom. Look at that. Not even pecking. They're all peck. There you start to hear some noise. And I'm thinking 
I'm thinking that um, I'm thinking you know running the flood coolant into the back is really going to help to flush those chips out. Um, but take a look, folks. Look at the surface finish. It's a spectacular surface finish. You get a basically a square um, edge because of the nature or the orientation of that tool. And then you know that's drilling at whatever I don't even know what diameter. Don't really care. That's not the point. We can come right back in. and bore, start boring it out. And it's pretty short, pretty rigid, which is nice too. And so now you've got a much bigger hole pretty quickly. Take a look. Again, great, uh, literally I've had this tool for 20 minutes, first cuts we've ever taken with it. Great service finish, great versatility. Uh, we like having a lot of different types of tools in our lathe and this could do the job of a number of them. And again, getting rid of those twist drills is going to be so friggin' huge. And we've been getting organized on our inserts with these red bins, link in video description, we love them. And you know, we've got the same tool we bought. Again, this is all from Shars. This is really inexpensive stuff, but the same CC uh, MT type insert, but this one is uh, designed for steel. So we'll let you know how this thing runs when we give it a go in uh, cutting steel as well. But that same insert is what we use for some of our boring bars. this smaller type of boring bar right here. So it's nice to have one less extra type of insert. And again, being able to stock them in both uh, the steel cutting and aluminum is huge. We also have been loving this drill here, which we need to do a video on, that cuts a much bigger hole and it has done stupendously good job in steel. But I can't find these W type inserts I can't find these W type inserts for aluminum, which is actually one of the reasons why we picked out uh, this little tool right here. So that's a fun, uh, fun little video. We're excited to take care, folks. See you next Wednesday.